today. This is our last video. Uh, we're going to conclude uh, talking about um, JavaScript and our compiler from Simple.js to Lambda.js, uh, where we're going to cover a bit in more detail the article, The Essence of JavaScript. We're also going to cover a bit of the homework um, with some frequently asked questions. So, um, the, the article that we're covering is The Essence of JavaScript uh, by these authors from Brown University, um, where the idea is to reduce JavaScript to a core calculus structured as a small step operational semantics. So this is just the formal rules that you've learned. They're slightly different, but if you squint your eyes, they kind of look the same. Um, and then we present several peculiarities of the language and show that our calculus models them. So in this sense, what they're trying to say is that they, the, their formalism is still enough to represent or and, and represent with uh, good fidelity JavaScript. And then we explicate the desugaring process that turns out JavaScript programs into ones in the core. And by core, they mean the core language. Uh, so Lambda.js. Uh, we demonstrate the faithfulness to JavaScript using real-world test suits. So I think this is pretty clear. They have a, a bunch of test suits that they use to just make sure that their um, interpreter does what it's supposed to do. Uh, and finally, we illustrate a, a, the, the utility by defining a security property and implementing a type system on the core and extending it to the full language. So this is this last sentence is just a, an extension that they do where they define some rules. That's what they mean by type system. So some rules that you can use to analyze the source code and find, uh, in this case, security bugs. Um, so that's the last contribution. It's more of a, an, an, I guess, a foray into um, to showing another practical use of this approach, which is you define this Lambda.js, you define things that can analyze Lambda.js. It's a smaller language, it's easier to analyze. Um, so you can do quite powerful things and they affect, they, they go back to JavaScript, right? Because you can find bugs in JavaScript. That's the whole point. Uh, so the paper, does the following and introduces Lambda.js, presents a translation from JavaScript to Lambda.js, which is very close to your homework eight, okay, and demonstrates the faithfulness with test suits. That's another contribution. And finally, they illustrate the utility of this Lambda.js language, mini language, uh, with this uh, language extension where it finds security bugs that can be traced back to JavaScript. Uh, so, this is how they specify their Lambda.js. And if you squint your eyes, we'll see that it's quite similar to what we have. There's a few difference for one thing. Uh, their algorithm is not recursive. So, what, you, what it does is just the smallest step uh, of execution. It does a single step and then it's suppo you're supposed to run uh, a step in a loop while you run it until... Uh, your expression becomes a value. So you, you're kind of iteratively evaluating, and what you're doing is what you do at each itera iteration. So in this case, for instance, if you have a let binder, where you're defined assigning x to v, or sorry, v to x, uh, and then continue with e, what you do, if v is a value, you replace x by, by v. So substitution rule that you've learned before. If you have a function, how do you apply it? In this case, it's function application, assuming all uh, expressions are already values. Uh, and then what you see here in the third rule is um, a field lookup. So if this is an object and if you have some string, um, some key assigned to a value V uh, and you look it up, then it should return the value V. Uh, they also specify what do you do when you when a field is not found, so it should return undefined. So this is what it's trying to say. If the field that you're looking for, which is this str underscore x, is not one from, 
you know, the range of all fields, then return undefined. Then you have the idea of updating a field, which is this rule. This is the original um, object, right? Which is just a hash map as we've learned. Um, and what they're doing, they're adding one more element here in the middle. Uh, they're updating an existing one, sorry. Uh, and they are creating fields. They, they have two rules, one for when you're overriding, another one when you're creating. Uh, but they, they are the what you would expect them to do. They have the rules also for deletion of a field. Okay, so this is just to, to give you an idea that um, what I've been teaching you is used currently uh, by researchers to explain how programming language are defined um, and also to propose new fe features. Um, so the essence of JavaScript comes with a lot of artifacts, actually, a lot of software that comes with the, the article. And it's a quite cool thing because not a lot of papers do that. So it's, I think it's very educational, which is another reason why I wanted to bring uh, this paper to your attention. So they have uh, Lambda.js implemented in Racket, and this you have access to. So it's in already in your Homework 8 um, directory. You can download it. They have a translator from JS to Lambda.js, which is implemented in Haskell. So if you need some pointers on how to solve your homework eight, you can browse the source code of the Haskell code. Uh, it will be more complicated because they are uh, ultimately just translating JavaScript, which is more complicated than a simple JS. They also have some cock formalism of um, basically the rules that I've shown you defined in this programming language called Coq that is used to do proofs uh, as a program. So you can program your proofs and it, the tool will check if uh, the proofs are correct. Uh, they also have another interpre interpreter of Lambda.js, but written in OCaml, which is another functional programming language. And you can have access to the code either by following one of these links or following the link here, github.com slash brown plt slash lambda js or lambda s5 where the lambda s5 is the latest version so they migrated from racket to uh, ocaml for some reason um, and now i just wanted to show you a few examples of uh, dereferencing and what how why we do it the way we do it so for instance this dot reference represents this code right here so you can see that they're doing some sort of pattern matching here on the left and this is the arrow and on the right hand side is what you return on each pattern uh, so in this case, the dot reference represents this. And what they have is, um, you can ignore the A and the A1 and A2, because that's just, um, that is just information where the where in the source code uh, E is, refers to. So it's just um, debugging information for when you throw an error, you can get that information back. So you can ignore that. Uh, basically, what you care about is this E, uh, and this S, and the E is is real is the X here, and the S is the Y here. Uh, and then what they do, they do a get field, which is this notation here, and then and then inside of that they do a deref like we do here, uh, where they, um, in this case because we already assume X to be a variable, uh, you just need to convert it to you know, the, the JavaScript, this, uh, the Lambda.js variable, but in their case, um, it could be any expression. So they have to recursively, um, they have to recursively uh, translate the, the first expression. Uh, and then you have Y, which is uh, a string. So you, as you can see, you're creating a string here. That's uh, exactly what we're doing here. So it's just to show you that what we do is not very far. So the formalism that I've taught you is not very far from what the the authors have implemented and have shown as well in the rules. So if you go through the paper, they even show you the rules as well. Uh, at least the, pap the, the paper I linked, I think there's a bug in a few rules. So I would follow the slides. Um, okay, so then... The Schrodinger code review. What is this? This is a method call. So just to show you that the way they do the derefs, like we do, uh, and then they look up uh, the object. So in this case, it's x dot y. So you want to look up the object x, 
and then you want to look up and you want to dereference x and then you want to dereference y because you have another object assigned to y so that's why you have the first deref here and the second deref here and then you want to call the code um, and you will see that they have they're generating a function application like we do because we're calling something at the end right and these are the arguments uh, so that's why you have the apply here uh, and inside of that you have the get field which is this thing right here and this thing right here so in this case i think they're talking about this code yeah so it's this outermost code so you can see they're generating the string code and everything um and yeah it's very close to what we have uh this part represents this part the inner part okay uh, oh actually it represents this part which is the arguments right yeah okay um yeah so this is just to give you a feel that it's not too different from what they actually are doing in practice for a tool that actually parses uh, uh, JavaScript. Um, of course, because we are just parsing lambda, uh, simple JS, as I called it, uh, the rules tend to be a bit simpler in our case. Also, we don't care about uh, debugging information and showing you exactly where in the source code you have something wrong, so the translation becomes a bit easier as well. Um, okay, so we can finally update the formalism as I presented it to you. Uh, I think one of the things we need to do that we didn't do before, that I didn't show you before in the formalism, is that you have to implement lookup, right, in the get field before I just showed you a simple hash, a simple hash table. Uh, but actually, if you want to be faithful to um, the object semantics, you do need to implement the lookup function that, uh, you know, when, when it evaluates an object and you get a field, uh, you need to go through Either it's in that object or it's in the parent and so on. So that's something that needs to be updated in the formalism. So that's why we have it here. Uh, we also need the rules for uh, allocation. So these are just the, your basic uh, heap, heap alloc and heap put. Um, and we can define or formalize the function of lookup as follows with these three rules and you can think of it as the recursive algorithm which is very close i also showed you the recursive algorithm but this is the the formalism just the, for the sake of completeness um okay and in the next video what i'm going to do is i'm going to follow a few common questions homework seven and eight